tonight at 5.30 on Check. Hi, I'm Judy Tayadze. Thanks very much for joining us today. Today we bring you a special presentation. We have two guests with us and one is Arun Gandhi. As you may have heard me mention a few minutes ago, he is the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi and he will be talking about lessons he learned from his grandfather. What's interesting is that his son has just declared for election in India and he'll be running for political office. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I know with all the shows that we've been doing over the last few weeks, it seems to me that our society is in serious need of redefining. If you pick up the newspapers today, you'll see again and again tales of abuse, tales of institutional corruption and things that need to be fixed. These are many things we've discussed over the last year as we've done this show. And yet it seems like we haven't really been focused and been grounded on what's causing this corruption. And sometimes I think we just have to look in the mirror to see where we're falling short. And our other guest will talk a little bit about that. But surely if we can't get beyond some of the materialistic concerns, we're going to have a difficult time dealing with what's important and what's basic. And we'll be looking at the principles of Gandhian philosophy a little later. We'll take your calls on your opinions of nonviolence right now to this number. As I mentioned, we have Aaron Gandhi with us. We also have Gail Schultz. She is with the Victoria Center for Self-Awareness. And I want to uh, first thank you both for joining us. You're thank welcome. you. That's thank great. you for having us on the show. Yeah, now I, uh, my grandfather worked with your grandfather, I guess is one way mm -hmm. to say it. Um, I had meant to tell people, I, uh, I've never really mentioned much about my own family background, but uh, I think you know some of the Tayabjis in Oh, India. yes, very well. Yeah. Mm, and they contributed a, a substantial amount to freedom of India and uh, yeah. the growth of India. And yet uh, the Tayabjis are Muslim and uh, the Gandhis are Hindu mm. and, and it seems like there's been an overcoming of that kind of uh, uh, religious tension. I guess I have to ask you though, we see in the news that uh, the U.S. might go to war with Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. uh, your grandfather wo was always talking about non-violence, extending love to each other, overcoming these kinds of frictions. How would you possibly deal with someone like Saddam Hussein or like a Hitler or someone who just, it doesn't matter what kind of tactics they have to use. They want to use these weapons, weapons of mass destruction. Well, that's a good question. It's the one that I keep facing uh, almost every day now, nowadays. But, you know, we've become very good crisis managers over the years. We wait until a crisis brews up and blows up in our face. And then we try to find a solution to that. And I think Saddam Hussein in Iraq is a prime example of how we allowed a conflict to continue to brew until it became a crisis. And now we want to get rid of Saddam Hussein and we want to get rid of um, Iraq. But at one stage, Iraq was a good friend of ours. And, yeah, and certainly so, of the United know. States, yeah. So we've got to learn. And I think the basic uh, philosophy of nonviolence is to learn to recognize conflicts and to do something about it before they become crises. Okay, in this case though, you know that uh, uh, one of Gandhi's principles was non-cooperation. Do not cooperate with evil. As the show goes on, we're going to show a few little clips uh, from the movie Gandhi mm -hmm. so that people who aren't familiar can see some pretty basic examples. But to some extent, the United Nations said, well, we will not cooperate with Iraq. We will have sanctions. We saw that that had some impact on South Africa. But in Iraq, we're seeing people starving to death. We're seeing children being born malnourished, and many are dying. And it doesn't seem to be moving the dictator. It seems to, that the, all of us who are not cooperating with him are punishing the people who are the most vulnerable. How do we deal with something like that? Well, we've got to understand sanctions have a limitation, you know, and unless all the countries of the world are prepared to um, you know, participate in the sanctions, it's not really going to work. In South Africa, it didn't work as much as we thought it would because there were many countries who were trading with South Africa in spite of the sanctions. And the same thing is happening with the, uh, Iraq. I mean, there's no way we can make the whole world accept the sanctions and not trade with Iraq. So unless we can do that, it's, it's not a very effective tool. 
Okay. Um, We're going to take a few phone calls, and then I want to bring you into this as well, Gail. Uh, you know, why did you bring Mr. Gandhi to Canada? Because he lives in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. See, that's not what you'd expect. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi's grandson is out <laughs> in Memphis. Living in Memphis, you know? Memphis Tennessee, yeah, exactly. of all the places. Down with yeah. Elvis's Graceland or exactly. something. Okay. okay, let's go to the phones. Let's talk to Emma first in Nanaimo. Hi, Emma. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, I hope I can make my thoughts clear here. Okay. Um, I, I live in Nanaimo, and it seems to be quite a racist kind, kind of um, community, and, and I am a white person, but uh, what I'm, I'm seeing is that people are, make fun of the fact that other um, uh, ethnic people um, live together, like two or three families or whatever live, live together in, okay. in a home, and they help each other, and, and I think that is what is missing in society today is uh, that people aren't um, communicating or uh, having their children be with their aunts and uncles and, and sisters, cousins, um, you know, grandmas and grandpas. So you're talking I, about the sort of the, the intolerance of that kind of culture. Yes, mm. it, it's the intolerance. And I think we have something, I think as a society, we have something to learn from other cultures in that um, other cultures seem to keep uh, families together, mm -hmm. and that in the Caucasian cultures um, seem to not value draw. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you well, know I, I mean? I they, they, they seem yeah. to they separate. They yeah. go away, and okay. they. I, I think there's really something, there's a value okay. I think there, that and, and I think it's wrong to, uh, to dismiss that kind of value. And okay. okay, well, thank you for raising that. Um, I'm not sure what it's like in Tennessee. Certainly in British Columbia, with a lot of, uh, many uh, Indian families are immigrant families, and they mm -hmm. frequently will help each other out, and it may not be exactly what the bylaws are supposed to allow for, but you'll see those families coming together. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, indeed. I think, you know, nonviolence, one of the principles of nonviolence is relationship building. And unless we build relationships on the basis of respect, understanding, acceptance, and appreciation, we are not going to have good relationships. And I think what we see in the Western culture today is a lack of relationships. It does seem like it's, it's a, one of the dysfunctions yeah, of the society. It is, it is, and it's becoming very um, serious. Mm -hmm. We need to take some cognizance of this uh, uh, and, and do something about it because all the violence that we see in this society uh, and in many of the Eastern societies now mm -hmm. is because the family ties are breaking up. You sure. know, we've become so materialistic. Nobody that can lean on anything families, else either. Yeah, yeah, families have come down in our list of priorities. Right. Our priorities now are jobs and making money. And, new car, and new, new stereo. Cars and, yeah. yeah so okay. we've got to put the family back on top. And okay. unless we do that, you know, it, it's going to create get a lot worse. of... Yeah. yeah. Okay, we, uh, we're a little over time for break. If you're trying to get through by phone, please let it ring because uh, we will get to you as soon as we can. And we'll be back in about two minutes. amazingly clear. The digital PCS network. Be free. BC Tel Mobility. Oh, I see that you're in the market for the Toyota Sienna minivan. Winning Best New Minivan Award in Canada sure doesn't hurt. With 194 horses, Sienna has the largest standard horsepower in its class. And priced from 26.3, Sienna minivan holds value and your family. BC's best-selling import at a mini rate. Save over $3,000 with 4.8 no limit financing over 60 months. Make haste, the fast start sales event at your Toyota BC dealers. Once a year for one day, United Carpet makes it even easier to buy floor coverings. It's United Carpet's crazy carpet caper. Save on every floor covering in the store. This is the biggest carpet sales event of the year. Doors open at 6 a.m. on Saturday, February 7th. Huge savings on absolutely everything in the store. Six months are as good as cash. Get Air Miles Travel Miles. Come see this special. United Carpets Crazy Carpet Caper, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. only on Saturday, February 7th. United Carpet, we've got personality. 
Welcome to the ocean. Dreams last for so long. Start your workday with 98 minutes of music commercial free. The Ocean FM 98.5. Victoria's at work choice, the ocean. Listen. And we're talking to Aaron Gandhi and Gail Schultz. Gail Schultz, Gail Schultz just before we show you something, um, Gail, you actually asked Mr. Gandhi to come in and to do a couple of lectures. Why did you ask him? Well, one of our mandates, Judy, is to make a difference to our extended community, and we have brought in people like Deepak Chopra and John Bradshaw. We felt that Mr. Gandhi coming was very timely for Victoria, although we did ask him to come way in the fall. He's so busy, that, I bet. <laughs> yes, uh, so I, I feel it's very timely. And also, when we look at the Center for Self-Awareness, we look very much about ourselves, our relationship to ourselves. I found it interesting, uh, Mr. Gandhi's comments about relationship and how we handle conflict. Right. So it's very big as far as our, our mandate goes, as far as making a difference in the world and healing separation, the consciousness of separation, okay. and returning us back to realizing that we're all one. Okay, we're going to uh, take a couple of calls in just a sec, but before we do, uh, the movie Gandhi, made by Richard Attenborough, won nine Academy Awards. If you haven't seen it, you should go rent it tonight. This is a scene from that movie, and it's in about 1893, and uh, Mohandas Gandhi has recently arrived in South Africa. He is a lawyer. He has uh, staged his first public protest. Almost nobody has shown up except for one reporter. And they are about to burn some passes that uh, they had to carry around because they were Indian. Let's take a look. Little Sammy. Now! Are there any more? If you want this kind of trouble, you can have it. As I was saying, it's kind of tough even to watch the movie on that. Uh, that was yeah. the very beginnings. Mm -hmm. It took 50 years to liberate India mm -hmm. after that. Okay, we'll go back to the phones. Um, let's talk to Steve in Duncan. Hi, Steve. Hi there. Hi um, there. Enjoy your show. Thank you. Um, do, 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 uh, I got an article here okay. that talks about Gandhi's seven blunders which still plague the world. I was wondering if his grandson would uh, remember them at all. Uh, apparently he gave them to him 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Do you know okay. what he's yes. talking about? Yes, oh, you I do. Oh, and he has, and I, he has in his pocket. I have them in my pocket. Yeah. Well, did you have a specific <laughs> question on that then? Uh, you well, know, I just want to know if he'd go through them because they sound quite uh, like they would have been uh, um, they're still valid today as they probably were yesterday, and I was wondering if he, if he could go through them. Okay, well, thank you for that. The seven blunders. Sure, the seven uh, blunders that Gandhi said were the responsible for all the violence that we see in our world today. Okay. And that is wealth without work pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, worship without sacrifice, and politics without principles. And I added the eighth one recently, and that's rights without responsibilities. Ah. Well, I think that would strike quite a chord in Canada. I, I, I know All it would. All over the world, I guess. Yeah, very much so. Mm. We certainly have heard a lot of those uh, many things in the last few months. Uh, let's talk to Leah now in Richmond. Hi, Leah. 
Hi. Hi I would like to say that uh, my heart are with the people in uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. However, I think that if uh, Saddam Hussein was any other criminal, he would be a long time ago to justice just because he is a leader of a country. Unfortunately, we, li we let leader of the country to be criminal and still be accepted and be talked to as, as equal. Uh, that's our... It, this is our... Um, so that's, that's where we're falling short, as you think, because he's a leader, he's getting off the hook? Oh, definitely. You can see it all over. I mean, uh, you just the other day had uh, the other uh, conversation about the Tamils. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think it's, it's unfortunate. The other thing I would like to mention that we will have problem in the Middle East, which my mother, she's, she was working with a king in Iran. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that the religious... You cannot fight Muslim against Muslim mm -hmm. if it's... Anyway, it's something to religious that I don't want to really elaborate here, but okay. well, well, let's, it's let's, unfortunate. Let's mm -hmm. ask him the question about leadership. And I guess uh, if, if I can add sort of something that might sound a little bit reactionary, but some people say that we're too soft on criminals even now. I mean, he's a criminal in the international arena. Some people say one of the problems in Canadian society is, you know, criminals are getting out of jail too soon. We don't crack down on them because we're trying to be too understanding and too sort of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, loving and forgiving, and, and they don't reciprocate. <laughs> so well, that's true. You see, we become loving and, and uh, understanding only after they become criminals. What we need to do is be loving and understanding before they become criminals. So I these mean, are these people, things. yeah, these people are not criminals uh, because they're born that way. They, nobody is born a criminal. They become criminals because of the circumstances in which they have to live and, and uh, you know, uh, grow up there. And so those circumstances yeah. create them and make them criminals. But your grandfather also believed very strongly that if there is a law, you follow that law or you accept the consequences. He himself spent a good portion of his life in jail. Yeah, and there are two types of laws. There are laws that are unjust and uh, which must be opposed. And there are laws that are just and which okay. must be uh, obeyed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's now talk to Don in Surrey. Hi, Don. Hello. Yes, it's your turn. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you've got to yeah, delay. Just, just listen to your phone and not your TV. Yes. Hello, Judy. Yeah. You have a lovely program. Thank you. I'd like to speak to Mr. Gandhi in his own language. Okay. I was born in Lahore. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gandhi Sahib, Bob, Kaisa Hai Aj. Okay. Acha. I was born there, and I even went back to India, mm -hmm. and my, our family was loved so much we hated to leave. Okay. But we chose Canada, mm -hmm. and we welcome you. Thank you very hearts. much. Thank you. I met your grandfather when I was 12 years old mm -hmm. in Simla. And thank you, and God bless you. Ram Ram. Oh, thank, thank you. you very much. Well, that's very nice. And, and so I guess you run into people from India wherever you go. You spend oh, yes, a lot of time yes. traveling. I think Indians exist everywhere, even in Iceland, if you go there. <laughs> it's very <I'm> sure. cold. <laughs> My mom went to Winnipeg one mm -hmm. year. I have to tell you, she walked around in a sleeping bag the whole time in the wintertime. <laughs> she said it was too cold. Um, now, let me see. Where am I going now? Oh, we're going to the break? Okay. Uh, just before we go to the break, though, Gail, now tonight is the first of two lectures on lessons that my grandfather taught me by that's, Mr. Gandhi. That's right. Tonight is that topic and tomorrow is uh, nonviolence or non-existence options for the 21st century. Meaning that if we don't choose nonviolence, we'll end up obliterating it. Non-existent. Mm -hmm. Non-existent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Both well, events are at 7 o'clock at the church on the corner of Balmoral and Quadra. Okay. And I think we have uh, some information to show them on screen Good. in the next segment. We're going to take a quick break. Two minutes. We'll be back with more of your calls and Mr. Gandhi. <laughs> Tayab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Sometimes you just get more than you bargain for. I think it's stuck in the drain. Well, let's take a look. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Value Village is having a full moon sale this Saturday. All pants are half off. Join Value Village for their big full moon sale on Saturday, February 7th. All pants plus everything else in the store are half off. That's right. Save 50% on everything all day Saturday. Have we got news for you. 
Every day, something happens that has meaning for our readers. Stories that deserve more than a minute on the news. We cover the stories that matter the most, in depth. News that matters and topics you care about, like sports, life and the arts, local news, editorials, and the TV Times. And if you call this number right now, you can get the Times Colonist for two weeks free. Free for two weeks. Just call 1-800-663-6384 and get the news you care about. Thank you for calling the Times Colonist. How may I help you? Call 1-800-663-6384. We cover the local stories that matter most to you. The Times Colonist. We don't just cover the news, we deliver it. It could be the breathtaking beach, or the elegant dining, or maybe the cozy log cottages. In any case, discover the difference at Tynamara Resort Hotel in Parksville. The romance, the pampering, the luxury in nature you owe yourself. Your weekend getaway at Tynamara is affordably priced. Tynamara Resort Hotel in Parksville on Vancouver Island. Call toll-free 1-800-663-7373 and discover the difference. Today, the subject, Gandhi's grandson, Aaron Gandhi, is here, and also Gail Schultz with the Victoria Center for Self-Awareness. And we'll, uh, we'll go back to the phones and show you some background information in just a sec. But just before we do, I have to clear something up. What is your relationship to Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, and Sonia Gandhi? No relationship at all. They, they belong to a very different family altogether. And uh, the, I guess the only relationship you might say there exists is she is the daughter of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, right. uh, who was very close to grandfather, and so, you know, there's no blood relationship, but there's just a, a political, political one. one. Did you find, do you find people think that you're related to a Yeah, Gandhi? everybody thinks Yeah, that, I find that know. a little confusing, but so Nehru, who was mm. Gandhi's political partner, had a daughter who happened to marry someone whose name was Gandhi. Yeah, and actually he's <laughs> a Parsi. Yeah. Uh, he, he was a Parsi. Yeah. So they spelt the name very differently. Oh, I see. But uh, they changed it to this spelling because I think they wanted so. <laughs> to capitalize I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. It. But if people meet a Tayabji, then that's some sort of cousin of mine because the Tayabjis are not that <laughs> big a family. Okay, um, before we go to the phones, we're going to give you a little background on the principles of Gandhian philosophy. So these are just a few in terms of public and personal policy. One must have an unconditional commitment to be truthful and authentic. And each of us should be nonviolent in relationships at all levels. But at the same time, we must accept that all forms of violence cannot be eliminated, and we should use our talents as much for the sake of others as ourselves. We should use our talents to empower others to bring about social change, and out of respect and understanding, we should accept one another's differences. Then we move beyond understanding others towards appreciating and celebrating our differences, and finally, we accept the interconnectedness of all life. And, of course, that became very important in his later life as he had the farm and the ashrams mm -hmm. and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Let's talk to Dave in New Westminster now. Hi, Dave. Hi. Um, first of all, I, I'm honored to be, to be speaking in the presence of uh, a Gandhi, mm -hmm. whatever Gandhi. Um, mm -hmm. um, my comment basically is um, uh, one with the, like the major fundamental differences between prejudice and racism. Mm -hmm. Racism is thrown around an awful lot. And in, in actual fact, what you see a lot of times is not racism. It's a prejudice. It's based on um, um, a formulation you have made from interaction with a certain individual, a certain uh, uh, race of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I, I'm just wondering uh, what Mr. Gandhi thinks about that, and how can we educate people to be, to be more aware on the, on the prejudice, which, which I believe in some respects mm -hmm. is healthy. It helps you guide your way through life helps you avoid uh, pratfalls, and um, how, to, how not to let those prejudices formulate into uh, the worst aspect of it, which is racism. Okay, well, that's an interesting distinction. Yes, it is, because, you know, all of these uh, prejudices that we have, racism or color prejudice or caste prejudice or social prejudice, religious prejudices, all of these things come out of ignorance because mm -hmm. we don't know enough about each other, we suspect each other, mm -hmm. we uh, uh, have all kind of preconceived notions about each other. And so 
And we never make any attempt to learn about each other. Right. So what nonviolence teaches us is that we've got to learn about each other, build bridges, break down barriers, right. and uh, if you try see to reach who, out. Yeah, yeah. See someone who you think, geez, I don't really like what they're up to. Try to get to know them better and see if you can understand it exactly. from that perspective. Okay. Uh, we're now going to talk to Don in Victoria. Yeah. Hi, Don. Yes, good afternoon there, Judy. Thank you very much for taking my call. You're um, I think what may be something to consider uh, here in our country, Canada, that we uh, have a Charter of Responsibilities mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the Charter of Rights. I think with the Charter of Rights, we see change without recognizing, um, perhaps, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. perhaps as much as the uh, past and the future that uh, the present change would, uh, would create. Um, and a lot of the, uh, let's say, the politicians and even our um, police forces throughout Canada are, are far too reactionary. Mm -hmm. and, and what I'm getting at is it, it's like letting a, uh, you know, a disease fester until a, a point where it, it really is hard to, uh, to um, you know, kill off, you might say. So. so you think that introducing a charter of responsibilities will help that? I think it would it would help us all, mm -hmm. and, and really any change has to, what would you say, uh, gather us all together. Because right. if we just change a portion of our society, we have did we have did nothing. We have to change together, otherwise it, it's futile. Okay, well that's a, an interesting point. I think so because I've been talking about that too. I said we have a human rights charter. We might as well have a human responsibilities charter. Absolutely, too. it's a good idea. And of course, your grandfather was a barrister. Mm -hmm. He was someone who understood the law and frequently knew that if you're going to build a good society, it all rests with how you write the laws. Exactly. I think that in my observation is that they're getting a bit shoddy in the writing of some of the laws, and and that's one reason why we have all this problem mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it could be good for some lawyers revenue but <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, we're going to show you uh, a piece again from the movie and and the reason that we selected this one it's uh, the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh now it's interesting that even last year there's still requests from India for the Queen of England to issue an apology for this it comes uh, under the British occupation and what you need to know is that there was a gathering in a, in a center where there was only one exit, an entrance, and the rest of it uh, you couldn't get out. And here it is. And be careful if you have children with you. Uh, they may not want to. It's very disturbing. Should we issue a warning, sir? They've had their warning. No meetings. ordered your troops to fire at the thickest part of the crowd? That is so. One thousand five hundred and sixteen casualties with one thousand six hundred and fifty bullets. The General, had you been able to take in the armored car, would you have opened fire with the machine gun? I think probably, yes. And that actually was Abbas Tayebji asking the question on the commission afterwards. That's a very disturbing thing that happened. It is. It is a very disturbing thing. And uh, nobody really knows the facts about it yet in, in terms of uh, the number of casualties. Right. I mean, British historians have put it down at 385 right. dead, whereas Indian historians say that more than 1,000 people died in that. It's a, a sh shocking thing, and of course that was one of the turning points in yeah. the resistance, but a lot of people had to die. And more shocking than that is the fact that uh, he was honored and, and, yeah. uh, and given uh, uh, you know, awards for his uh, work in India. Right, for showing how tough, uh, how how tough, tough he was. Yeah. Okay, let's talk to Ashok now in Surrey. Hi, Ashok. Hi, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Uh, I want to ask uh, Mr. Arun Gandhi a couple of questions. Sure. 
on what projects uh, you are working uh, to spread the gandhian philosophy particularly in uh, usa and canada in what projects yeah do you have another uh, question as well yeah, you yeah, yes because in uh, this modern western world what is required uh, it's a uh, simplicity in life and uh, non violence and uh, basically this good family bonds and uh, uh, good relations right exactly you answered my uh, <laughs> the question yes okay, well, this is what we are working on question. but what kind of projects i think you want to know like are you we, speaking are you working on seminars or are you no we we do uh, workshops seminars lectures we um, founded an institute institute we have an institute in memphis <laughs> it's on the campus of Christian Brothers University isn't that funny and i'm sorry but memphis tennessee and a christian brothers university <laughs> and there you are with your principles right. of non violence uh well yeah a lot of people want to know why memphis and i say well it's appropriate because dr king was assassinated there okay and so you know we should There's be working in that fee- a field of non violence okay but uh, yes we've been trying to influence young children make them understand what is non violence what do we mean by it and and the full scope of it you know not many people not just children but even adults are not aware of the full scope of non violence of the philosophy how of the it philosophy okay yeah. let's just quickly take a call from bruce in victoria hi bruce hello jay hi go ahead i'm very uh, privileged to be able to speak with you and uh, mr arn gandhi mm-hmm. but uh, from earlier in the show uh, near the beginning uh, mm-hmm. you were mentioning uh, this business about fragmentation of families right and i understand that very well uh because uh my family's been in canada since 1818 right. and uh originally mongolian then across uh through europe and england and ireland and all the rest of it but it doesn't matter that's just family history <laughs> uh the thing about it is is uh what we need is to follow the orients or the orientals as far as extended families right. things would work much better if we ran extended families with three generations minimum together right. because the older member of the family has 50 60 years experience yeah. where then the young children coming along can learn much more rather than having a, a parent that's 20 years or 30 years older right uh, if he has a, a grandfather living in the same household or a grandmother of course the women are very important too yeah uh, they can then, pass uh, on all the wisdom this is it yeah. uh, in other words history okay. uh, they've had the experience and uh, my family being farmers and things in Canada when they first came here right and uh, they were uh, extended families okay well thank you for that Bruce uh, just quickly on that then Gail I guess that's one of the things that you want to get people grounded on at the center for self awareness yes we have a concurrent youth program with uh, all of our sunday celebrations Judy and in it the uh, they very much teach the concept of oneness and love and not coming from fear as opposed to right uh, just sort of extending to each other exactly yeah. and and enhancing their relationship with themselves working on self esteem right through communication skills the virtues okay we're going to show people like now that. how they can uh, get in touch with you and how they can go in and hear you speak tonight and tomorrow night if you want to see and hear Arun Gandhi there are two opportunities they're only in Victoria though It's a Victoria Center for Self-Awareness at 205 2951 Tillicum Road, Victoria BC, V9A 2A6 and you can phone 250-480-1222 and their hours are Monday to Thursday from noon to 5. You can fax them at 250-480-0022 24 hours a day and they have an internet website and uh, after the break we'll tell you where the speeches are taking place. We'll be back with more of your calls in 2 minutes. <laughs> Real quickly, I've got something to show you. BioGuard Pool and Spa Chemicals. By the way, I'm Grant and I own Vintage Hot Tubs. If you're looking for built to last, the guaranteed lowest running cost and the ultimate in hydrotherapy performance, come visit our showroom at 2000 Government Street. We've all been in business 20 years. Besides saunas and gazebos, we've got portable paradise breeze rooms, custom built retractable sunrooms. Isn't that great? And we also design and build sun decks. One more thing, we've got private test soak rooms to make you feel like gold. Oh, there's my wife. The world is changing. Nothing is safe anymore. Millions of jobs were lost. Will yours be next? Protect your family. Create your own secure future. Start your own business at the 8th annual Entrepreneur Expo at the P&E. Do you feel something is missing in your job? Do you want more time with your family? Discover the time-proven ways of becoming your own boss at the Business Opportunity Show of the Year. Attend the 8th annual Entrepreneur Expo. See businesses you can own this weekend. Pacific National Exhibition. Introducing the first ever daily protein remover for soft contact lenses, OptiFree Super Cleanse. It keeps your lenses like new longer. Call and try it. Free. Hello. 
Reality check. A free sample? A free is good if the product is great. So what would be great is some cold hard facts, right? Fact. People who use SupraCleanse every day for six months said their soft contact lenses felt as comfortable as a pair less than a week old. Contacts I start wearing in winter can feel as comfortable as new come summer. This has got to be hard work. SupraCleanse is easy. Just put one drop in your lens case overnight with OptiFree multi-action solution. It's unbelievably simple. Just one drop while I sleep? <laughs> I'm dreaming. The free sample. Please tell me it's not a one-time shot. Please tell me it cries out. Try me, try me for a whole month. Okay. We'll give you a 30-day supply free. Sold. Call now for your one-month supply of OptiFree Supra Cleanse or buy some wherever lens care products are sold. Try it. Feel it. Believe it. And we're just talking about background information. We're going to show you the last clip from Gandhi. And as I say, if you haven't seen the movie, I would recommend it because it really does document the sacrifices and the commitment that's necessary to affect that kind of change. Now, in this last clip, uh, Mr. Gandhi was just telling me it's his father who actually starts the clip. Just so you know, this is shortly after uh, Mahatma Gandhi has led the people across India to create salt. The British have started to jail everybody, and they have just thrown Gandhi in jail. And this is the response of the protesters. Last night at midnight, they took Gandhiji from us. They expect us to lose heart or to fight back. We will do neither. On you go! No, sir, the gate is closed. in just a second, but just before we do, it, the media played an enormous role in the liberation of India. As we saw there, Martin Sheen mm -hmm. is playing the reporter. In the first scene, a reporter witnesses the brutality, and it was in the reporting of these events yeah. that the whole no resistance movement uh, was able to move along. If the media don't show up, or if they attack the protester, it would change the dynamics dramatically. It would, but I think if the movement was carried out uh, effectively and with the proper uh, understanding, the media would have to take notice of eventually. it, you know, eventually. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk to Pat in Nanaimo. Hi, Pat. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I just want to applaud um, your guest for continuing his work, and um, uh, we all need to take responsibility for our actions. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when, um, throughout history, um, when people have been greatly oppressed, uh, the fall of the Roman Empire, the Russian fall of the Russian um, Empire, mm -hmm. uh, the Russian, uh, the French Revolution. Uh, if history repeats itself, right. and uh, we need to learn that um, uh, we we need to learn uh, work together and um, 
not let greed overtake us. And um, there's no reason why we should have starvation in this world. Right. There's plenty of food for everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. well, thank you. we need to learn to work together, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for those comments. Uh, when she talks about that, we live in a, in a world where, uh, you know, Christmas, the biggest event of the year, is mm -hmm. frequently driven by acquisition. Right. Uh, it's a race to acquire things. It's a race to be yeah, well, You know, Grandfather used to say materialism and morality have an inverse relationship. <laughs> when one increases, the other decreases. But and if we, we see this happening yeah, today. And yeah. The more materialistic we become, the less moral we are. But if uh, if we can't all be saints, mm -hmm. because not everybody could be a Mahatma Gandhi. No, we don't have to be all saints. But Grandfather said that we need to find a level at which we can live with materialism and morality together. Okay. And that doesn't need a saint to, you know, to find a to balance, find a balance okay. there. Okay, now I think at this point we're going to show people, is that right, Kevin? Are we showing? Yes, all right, thank you, Kevin. We're going to show you where you can see the speeches. And uh, tonight, it's from 7 to 9 p.m., Lessons I Learned from My Grandfather, is at the First Metropolitan Church at 932 Balmoral at Quadra. This is only in Victoria. And then tomorrow night, it's going to be from 7 to 9 again, Nonviolence or Non-Existence, Options for the 21st Century, again at the First Metropolitan Church at 932 Balmoral at Quadra in Victoria, and so sorry to everybody who doesn't live in Victoria. <laughs> I Neil, know, you'll have I'm to sorry, yes. <laughs> You'll have to come back and... I'll have to come the, back. Yeah, okay, we have to take a break and we'll be right back. For really fresh breath, use Scope every day. No other leading mouthwash kills more bad breath bacteria than Scope. So when you want to get one step closer, you know you can. Sorry, is that your foot? Get one step closer with Scope. It's not just the wind or the cold. One of the harshest environments can be the inside of a diaper where wetness can upset the delicate pH. Pampers Baby Dry can help. It turns the blue liquid clear as it lowers the pH, and it pulls that wetness away to help keep skin dry and healthy. Wetness can upset the delicate pH in a diaper, and Pampers Baby Dry helps control it. Help protect their skin from wetness with Pampers Baby Dry. Pamper the skin they're in. When should you plant geranium cuttings? What's the only time of year to safely move peonies? How long can live Christmas trees remain indoors? Get answers to these and other questions by ordering the Get Up and Grow Gardening Guide in Calendar for 1998. Gord Nickel, host of the Get Up and Grow TV show, has compiled over 360 useful tips to help novices and green thumbs alike succeed in the garden. All of this timely information has been combined with rich botanical illustrations to give you an invaluable resource. Hi, I'm Gord Nickel, host of Get Up and Grow, seen every Saturday morning on Check TV. Order the Get Up and Grow Gardening Guide and Calendar now and you'll receive a Forget-Me-Not Seed Package at no extra cost. To order your Gardening Guide and Calendar, send $12.99 plus $2 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Or call 1-888-456-5577 and have your credit card handy. The guide is also available at Canner Nursery in Victoria, Abbotsford and Chilliwack. Call now and get growing in 1998. And we're talking to Dr. Arun Gandhi. What is the doctor for? Oh, I got three honorary doctorates. Oh, three. So I know. Oh, three. <laughs> not not one I or two, three. I, I don't deserve them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe people like to say it, too. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk to Bill in Abbotsford. Hi, Bill. Yes, hi. Hi, I have to apologize to Mr. Gandhi mm -hmm. about that video, the mo that clip. I never realized how wicked it was. Yeah. I am half German and half Scottish. The British attacked Scotland years ago in history, yeah. and there's a movie, a video on that, and that was wrong. Right. Now, in India, I work with a bunch of East Indian men, and they're just like anybody else. Yeah. Some I like, some I don't like, just okay. like anybody else. There's right. no difference, and because I don't like someone, that is not racist, because there's a lot of white people I don't like also. Well, sure, mm -hmm. it's a personal choice. Mm -hmm. Now, in India, 
not long ago, they had a news bulletin. They sell children to factories to make money. Mm. What about that? Yeah, child labor laws. That's yeah, an it's, a, point. it's an awful thing. Uh, yeah. you know, Thanks for raising that, Bill. Yes, it's, uh, it's a tragic thing, and this is exactly what I was saying a moment ago, that materialism and morality have an inverse relationship, and so we don't mind selling our children uh, just so that we can make a, a few more, uh, you know, bucks. Uh, right. There. But also there's another side to this whole thing. It shows how impoverished people get that they have gotten to that desperate situation mm -hmm. when they have to sell their children yeah. uh, to earn a few uh, extra, dollars. extra dollars or rupees to feed the family there. And, and so we, mm -hmm. you know, can't just condemn this and forget about it, but it we need to look to at the whole problem and right. see what can we do to help these people get out of that kind of poverty. And it's a lot easier to judge and dismiss those. Exactly. And that exactly. goes back to your earlier point about try to understand first and see The conflict what first the before is. we see the crisis. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk to Matt in Courtney now. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Jeff's got a... Well, I don't know what that was. I think Matt needs some, uh, needs some help. Uh, just before we go back to the phones then, Gail, what is the purpose of the Center for Self-Awareness? We're a spiritual center for spiritual awakening, a community for that. It's about healing the sense of separation. So what we're talking about here is exactly what the center is about. It's about enhancing our relationship with each other, right. about empowering individuals in their own lives into true leadership, and, and the true self-confidence is truly knowing that we're spiritual beings going through a human experience, so and we're all one. Tangible. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's talk to Joyce now in Victoria. Hi, Joyce. Good afternoon, yeah. and I really am honored to speak to a relative, any relative, of one of my icons all my life. Oh, okay. That's nice. Thank Prejudice you. is to prejudge without knowledge, mm -hmm. and education is the answer to that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I say, I, the only thing I am intolerant of is intolerance. <laughs> we will not tolerate it. No. Yes. I, anything else, I will judge after I have gained the knowledge about the person, whatever, right. the food, you name it. Mm -hmm. And I just loathe intolerance. Okay, well, yes. thank you for that. <laughs> You know, this goes back to the seven blunders where Gandhi talked about uh, mm -hmm. knowledge without character. Right. And what we do today in the name of education is we give a lot of people the knowledge how to make more money, but we don't help them build their character and understand each other and build human relationships. And that is where our education is lacking today. Oh, I see. You know, we give them a career. We show them how to make money. In fact, recently I was at a college in uh, uh, in... Portland or somewhere, I don't remember, I've traveled so much. But they were saying that nowadays the young people who come for enrollment very blatantly ask them, which profession I am going to be able to make more money? Just tell me that and I'm going to get enroll for that mm -hmm. kind of thing. That's the goal. The goal is to make more money right. and they want to go and get into that. Wow. And that's what knowledge without character is. Isn't that a, that's an interesting statement on society. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk to Gary now in Duncan. Hi, Gary. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'd just like to ask, um, what, do you, what does he think about the political unrest in India between the Sikhs and Hindus? Oh, that's a good question. And, of course, we have some of that spill over into British Columbia from time to time. Right. Uh, you know, this is a tragedy. Um, I, you know, it shouldn't happen. We have this problem with the Sikhs and we have the problem with the Muslims and and all of these things, and yet India ought to be able to live together and show the world that we can live with all the differences. Uh, right. It had the opportunity to do that, but it didn't uh, take that opportunity. We played a lot of partisan politics at all levels, and everybody, because they wanted to get into political power, jockey for positions, right. uh, they didn't mind sacrificing the nation. And now your and son is going to throw himself into that? I was, yeah, my son is going in and, uh, and I hope that he'll be able to do some good for the country. There. I hope he has a Because we've got skin. to look at people as human beings, not as Sikhs or Muslims right. or Hindus, mm -hmm. there, but as human beings and live and build a nation that we can all be proud of. Okay. And uh, that probably applies almost anywhere. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more of your calls. And we're talking to Arun Gandhi.
wherever you go in British Columbia, thousands of small and medium-sized businesses rely on us to guide them over challenging financial terrain and changing economic climates. We've got the accounting and computer expertise to help you succeed. It's really quite elementary. Just eight of over 27,000 certified general accountants. We're the name brand for business in Canada. We all want the mildness of ivory. Hey! Oh, you got your ivory. It doesn't have any additives or strong perfumes. That's why I trust the purity of ivory. <laughs> Smiled on her skin and ours. Who's got my ivory? <laughs> For healthy looking skin, the look is pure ivory. For a different experience, try Ivory Moisture Care Body Wash with moisturizers. The Grime Zones, they're tough, they're all over the house, and they're about to meet their match. Yes, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean's got the muscle for tough grime like stovetop grease, mudroom muck, and kids being kids dirt. It all shines clean because Mr. Clean muscles under to lift off dirt faster, better than the leading pine cleaner. Mr. Clean takes the tough out of grime zones everywhere. Let the clean shine through with Mr. Clean. Real quickly, I've got something to show you. BioGuard Pool and Spa Chemicals. By the way, I'm Grant, and I own vintage hot tubs. If you're looking for built to last, the guaranteed lowest running cost, and the ultimate in hydrotherapy performance, come visit our showroom at 2000 Government Street. We've all been in business 20 years. Besides saunas and gazebos, we've got portable paradise breeze rooms, custom-built retractable sunrooms. Isn't that great? And we also design and build sun decks. One more thing, we've got private test soak rooms that make you feel like gold. Oh, there's my wife. And we're talking about all kinds of things, including a couple of speeches that are coming up tonight and tomorrow night at the Self-Awareness Center. Yes, at the church on the corner of Quadra. Valmoral and Quadra. Okay, yes, good. Yeah, don't send them to the wrong place. No, don't send them to our office. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the phones and talk to Masood in North Vancouver. Are you there? Mas Hello? Yes, it's your turn. Hi. Uh, okay, I have two questions for Mr. Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, uh, my first question is, uh, have there been any kind of monetary compensation to the citizens of India by the British government? Mm. That's an interesting question. Uh, not that I know of, no. Okay. Okay. All right. And my second question is, I was born and raised in Afghanistan and I've been in Canada for the past uh, six years. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're all aware of all the problems in, uh, you know, the country there with you know, really bad, corrupt political system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, based on your opinions, uh, what is the key for a good, successful, democratic state nowadays? You know, what do you think citizens have to do nowadays in order to achieve that okay. status for their country? Good question. I think we need to have some principles. We need to regain our morality. I think we need to be sincere in what we want to do. We need to appreciate that people depend on us if we are politicians and if we are going to, f you know, yeah. uh, be responsible for shaping their future and all that. So, But people tell me all the time that uh, good people won't go into politics. For example, I said to you, Gail, will you run for office? You'd say, oh, no, you know, politics. I'm sure, I'm just guessing. Yeah. You're not planning to run for no. office. No. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and to that extent, I mean, to what extent should people say, all right, I have to put myself forward, this is the way it has to go, like your son is doing. Exactly. I think that's uh, one of the things, you know, good people have always kept away from politics, and yeah. so we've had uh, a whole lot of criminals getting into <laughs> politics, and we deserve yeah. what we get. Yeah, that's know. right. So we suffer. So we've got to get around. involved uh, and, and be more conscious of things. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to Ramesh in New Westminster. Hi, Ramesh. Hi. Hi, go ahead. I, I'm thrilled to talk to uh, Arun Bhai, whose grandfather has uh, has uh, uh, given us independence. Right. I'm a, I'm a third generation Ugandan of Indian descent. Mm -hmm. um, Arun Bhai, I, I welcome you to BC. Oh, isn't that Thank nice? you. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much for thank that, you. Ramesh. Now, Arambai, he's calling you brother. Mm -hmm. That's an honorific that uh, yes. you get that. And, and people should know, I guess, Gandhiji was an honorific, Panditji. Mm -hmm. It's actually Tayabji that 
it was a long exactly. time ago. I can't take credit for that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's something that gets added on as an honorific. So you must be very fortunate to get a chance to travel and oh have yes. people give oh you yes. that feedback. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. You have to live up to this name now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try to take a call from Tanya in Victoria. Hi, Tanya. Hi. Hi. Um, I just actually wanted to ask two questions. Okay. Um, the first one was, um, what does Dr. Gandhi believe will come of the U.S. and Canada's force involvement with Iraq? Okay. Um, and also knowing now what we know about war, mm -hmm. um, how can anybody even think about confronting someone like Saddam Hussein without resulting in death, really? I mean, yeah. they can't expect to, to go into that environment and not expect a, a war. Okay, well, th those are good questions to end on. Well, what, you know, what will uh, happen with this war if it takes place is a lot of innocent people are going to die unnecessarily there. Uh, we are not really going to be able to get rid of Saddam Hussein in this fashion. Um, and uh, so, you know, if we want to get rid of Saddam Hussein, uh, I think the, in the, that has to come from the people of Iraq. And I think and we need to go back to that earlier question that somebody asked about uh, criminals being in pol political power. Uh, the people of Iraq uh, have decided that uh, Saddam Hussein is their leader. Mm -hmm. And how can we sitting outside the country, dis you know, count countermand or ca contradict their uh, selection? Until so they the, have the people themselves them. have to uh, find the strength to overthrow him, okay. you know. And again, I have to hark back to grandfather's quotation where he said, nobody can oppress you more than you can oppress yourself. Okay, well that's a, a good mm. one to end on because we're out of time. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us. It's thank been you. very interesting. It was a pleasure. And thank you for bringing him here, Gail. You're welcome. And good Our luck pleasure. with the forums. And we'll be back after a break. <laughs> Everyone's long distance calling is different. And chances are every month is different to the next. That's why BCTEL created Personalized Long Distance, a new plan that automatically applies its best rates to where you call the most each month, from as low as 10 cents a minute. Call 1-888-561-5554 to get new personalized long distance that's one of a kind. Just like you. Be close. BCTEL. Edgar and Miner have a whole new look. Now they're Edgar and Miner Carpet One. It's simple. More buying power means better savings. Low prices, quality carpet. We have got the best guarantees. 25-year wear warranty and a 15-year mat crush warranty. And a 60-day satisfaction guarantee. And at Edgar and Miner Carpet One in Victoria, make no payments and pay no interest for six months. Value. Total value. Still the same Victoria tradition. Visit the new Edgar and Miner Carpet One on Bay. It could be the breathtaking beach, or the elegant dining, or maybe the cozy log cottages. In any case, discover the difference at Tynamera Resort Hotel in Parksville. The romance, the pampering, the luxury in nature you owe yourself. Your weekend getaway at Tynamera is affordably priced. Tynamera Resort Hotel in Parksville on Vancouver Island. Call toll-free 1-800-663-7373 and discover the difference. Be what we under salt. Don's Furniture! Even Goldilocks would have an easy time choosing a Springwall chiropractic mattress. There's so many. Five varieties, each available in firm and extra luxury firm. Don's Furniture is your chiropractic mattress center. Sleep healthy and feel better. Shop Don's Furniture on Fiddleson in Victoria. Take it from a sleep expert. Goldilocks. Be what we under salt. And coming up, we'll be talking about corporate funding in the school system, also family service cutbacks, some interesting develop developments, BCMA doctor's controversy, and our finance minister provincially, Andrew Petter, will also be joining us, and that will be coming up next week. Now, if you have questions you would like to fax us with respect to corporate funding or comments, you can fax us at 250-389-1226. And in closing, uh, Arun Gandhi has handed me the eight blunders, which is uh, Mahatma Gandhi's seven blunders and the one he's added, and I will read those to you. The first is wealth without work, then pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, 
worship without sacrifice, politics without principles, and the one that's added is rights without responsibilities. I'm sure these resound for you as much as they do for me. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. It's here, or you can come out, even in your underwear.